So this is Mr. Anger, and we're on pace 1102. It's the sixth one in the Algebra 1 pace course. And if my voice doesn't sound normal, it's because I'm getting over a cold. And I thought by now it'd be better, but uh, at least I can talk. I lost my voice three days ago, and it's coming back. It's just kind of rough. But let's talk about how to graph these lines. And actually, I was looking in the pace here, and in the first section, uh, they make it look pretty easy. Everything's just X and you know X and Y. There's no coefficients, no numbers in front of X or Y. And then all of a sudden, when they introduce the very first coefficients, they're wanting us to um, graph two lines on the same graph and find the point where they cross. So. Um, I'm looking at page 18, the directions, solve by graphing. Set up a system of three values for each unknown. And uh, then graph it, find the point where they cross, okay? So let's, let's talk about um, some steps here in doing this. And I, I'm going to make a recommendation, okay, that I think you'll find will make this a little easier. <clears throat> okay, that was weird. I just all of a sudden thought that the camera wasn't working, so I checked. <laughs> and it looks like it is working. So, all right, we'll keep going here. Um, this is actually uh, one of the example problems that they gave. Notice we have a coefficient in front of 3 and in front of y. What we should always do in a case like this is rework the equation so that we solve for y first. And you'll see y in a minute. So 3x plus 2y equals 6. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. All right. Spin around here. 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. Now I'm going to divide by 2. Okay. So y equals negative 3 halves x plus 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now, when I make a table of values and I plug in for x, I can easily solve for y by just plugging into this template. Okay, so this x becomes like a little template, a little parenthesis. And whatever value I'm going to plug in, I can put in here. Now, let me give you two tips here that I think will be really helpful. Number one, because you always wonder, what number, how do they know what numbers to plug in? It seems like whatever they plug in ma magically works. And uh, you might plug in numbers that end up being really confusing fractions, and then they're really hard to, to graph. And you think, I can't graph this because i got fractions. Actually, you can, but it's just kind of messy. So here's tip number one. Always, always, always use zero. Okay? Because when you plug in zero, then this whole thing disappears and all you get is this number. Okay? So that makes it really easy. We actually call this the y-intercept. This is where it crosses the y-axis, is where x equals zero. Now here's the other tip. Look at the denominator if there's a fraction here. Since the denominator is over 2, then I want to plug in 2 and I want to plug in negative 2. And if I want to plug in another number, I'm going to plug in 4 because it is a multiple of that denominator. Now watch the magic here, okay? Because when I plug in 2, then the 2 cancels against the denominator, da, 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 and I get negative 3 plus 3. Ah. Now let's plug in negative 2, okay? So negative 2, the 2 will cancel, but the negative times negative makes this positive, so now I have positive 3, Okay, the two canceled. Positive three plus three is six. Okay, so I can I can graph that. It's not off the graph yet, but it's getting near the edge. And if I plug in positive four, so let me actually do that. So notice I would get negative twelve over two, which would be negative six. Negative six plus three, which would be negative three. Okay. So now you can see that if I were to graph these points, okay, over here on the graph, and I'm just going to do it real fast, you know, 0, 3, 1, 2, 0, at negative 2, I'm way up here at 6, and then at positive 4, I'm down here at negative 3. Okay, so I have a line that kind of looks something like that. All right. 
Now this, this line over here, this, was, this should have been 5x, sorry. 5x minus y equals 10. So we can do a similar thing here where we solve for y. All right, so 5x minus y equals 10. Subtract 5x from both sides, negative y equals negative 5x plus 10. And then divide by negative 1, so y equals positive 5x minus 10. Okay, we're just, if you multiply them all or divide them all by negative 1, now it's positive y. Now it makes it real easy to set up a table of values. Plug in for some x values, solve for y. So I would plug in, obviously we always start with zero, that's the easy one. Um, we could do one, we could do two, um, negative one, I'm looking at it, would actually give me negative five, which would make it negative 15, which is kind of far off the graph. So what if I did three, okay? So I plug in zero and I get negative 10. Plug in one and I get five minus 10 is negative five. 10 minus 10 is zero, and then three would be 15. 15 minus 10 is five, okay? See how easy that is? Now I'll come over here to the same graph and uh, at zero or way down here at negative 10. All right, at one, we're at negative five. At two, we're at zero, hey! And then over here at three, we're up here at negative five. I mean, at positive five, okay? So we have a line that goes like that. I have to kind of fudge that. But anyways, the point is, haha, get it, the point? I just made that up, sorry. The point is that these two lines cross at a point. And in this case, we happen to see that it's on both of these um, tables of value. It's the point two, zero. That means that that point is the solution. So we could literally write the answer as being a point, x, y, and that value would be two comma zero. We call that the solution for this set, this, this, these two lines, okay? And we found that by graphing them and then find the address of the point where they intersect, okay? Now, let's just start you off and then I want you to finish it. This, this next problem is an actual problem from this um, page. I think it's page either 18 or 19. And uh, let's just get you started because some of these are kind of easy. They don't have coefficients. We have coefficients on two of these here, all right? So 2x plus y equals 3. So y equals negative 2x plus 3. Actually, you know what? That's pretty easy, okay? I'm not going to continue with that one because you can just set up a table of values, plug in some numbers for x, like 1, you know, 0. You always got to do 0. You could easily do 2. You could try negative 2, things like that, all right? And then get the corresponding y values. I like to do four points. You have to at least do three. I like to do four because if you graph them and one point is kind of way out of whack, then you know you made a mistake and you can go back and resolve for that one. Um, but even three. If you do three and one's out of whack, then you did something wrong, you gotta figure out which one. But if you have four of them and three are lined up, then those are the three that are correct. Just draw a line and connect them, okay? But let's take uh, the second line, <coughs> seven X, ooh, whoa, 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 plus five Y equals 21, yikes, okay. So five Y equals negative seven X plus 21. All right, this one's gonna be kind of messy. So we're going to divide by 5. Why do they do this? Yeah. Negative 7x. Oops, that looks like a 2. Negative 7x plus 21. Okay? Um... So if we make a table of values, what are some numbers we could plug in for x? Well, I always say plug in zero, but notice what happens here. We get 21 over five, which means when we go to graph it, it's gonna be um, four and one fifth. So it's not gonna go through right at a point. Let's plug in five, okay? So let's see what happens here. If I plug in five, 
So you get negative 35 fifths. plus 21 fifths, which is negative 14. There's gotta be a better way of doing that. These are ending up being fractions. Um, I mean, it'll work, okay? It'll work, it'll just be a little messy Mr. Anger is speechless, can you tell? Okay, so, and if we reduce that, that's almost three. So it's negative two and four fifths. Yee. Okay, I'm a little scared to keep going. I don't have, I don't actually even have a score key for this course to pull out and look at the score key to see what numbers they chose and how they graphed it. Um, I should have done this one before I started the video, sorry. But this is real life, okay? This is real life, this is messy. So, <clears throat> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna suggest that on this one you talk to your parent or supervisor or maybe leave this one and go do the rest of them that don't have these fraction um, because I think there's only like this one, maybe there's two on the whole page. And do the rest, make sure you're understanding the concept, okay? And then when you go up and score, maybe you can get an idea, look at the score key and see what numbers they chose to, to plug in. Because they, will, I'm sure, chose some that just worked beautifully and gave you whole numbers and you're not gonna be doing messy fractions, okay? But I'll bet you when you find that out, that these points, zero, four and one fifth, and five on the x-axis will be at negative two and four fifths, okay? Um, I bet that would work, all right, you try it. I'm gonna have to stop the video for here though.